The lake of fire is the eternal penitentiary. But death and hell have, death has the body and hell has the soul. That's where people without Christ have died and they may be their body in the grave, their soul being held there waiting until the final judgment. Well, why bring them out and judge them again? Because it's not all over yet as we're going to see. Hugh Hefner, who founded the Playboy Empire, I, I pray he'll get saved. I hope he will. But if he doesn't, when he dies, he'll go into a holding place and be taken out then to be judged. Why can't he be judged now? Because it's not finished yet. You see, he has, he has corrupted those who will corrupt 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 those, who will corrupt those and on and on and on and on. And that wicked influence will not stop until it has reached the shores of eternity. So God has to wait till it's all over to bring these out of that holding place and say, now we're going to face the record. That is the final judgment, friend, when all of the facts are in. Now here's, let's go to the third thing and think not only of the summons delivered, but the secrets repressed or the secrets displayed rather. Look in Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 13 again. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. The books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. God is keeping books. God is recording the secret things that nobody else knows about. May I give you some verses for your margin? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. You see, there's secret things, things that nobody else knows things you did when you were overseas in the service, things your mother, your father don't know about, things your wife doesn't know about, things your children don't know about, things perhaps that you've forgotten. God is keeping his books. They're secrets that have been repressed. We tried to put them out of our consciousness. We think that perhaps the statute of limitations has taken them all away. And we've lived long enough that we've kind of hardened over those particular things. But God has kept those books. I had a friend who was being criticized and I said, how do you feel about being criticized? He said, I just say, thank God they don't know anymore. <laughs> just thank God they don't know anymore. God knows it all. Secrets that have been repressed, secrets that have been recorded. God is keeping a record. That should not amaze you today. It might have amazed your great-grandfather that everything you've done has been recorded. I was rummaging through some old boxes and I, I found some tapes and they were tapes of a radio program I used to do many, many years ago, back in the 50s. It was called Daybreak. I said, let me hear what I sounded like back yonder. It was weird. There, I just put that tape on, and there I was, a, a half a century ago almost, preaching the Word of God. Now, if man can do that, what will God do? God's candid camera, God's tape recorder, God has those things that you have long forgotten. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak shall they give account thereof in the day of judgment. You have cursed. You have taken God's name in vain. Not everybody here perhaps has done that, but many of you have. You've asked God to damn something. You've gotten mad. You've said, oh, Jesus Christ, or whatever. You've taken his name, the precious name of Jesus, upon your lips and mixed it with the filth and slime of the sewer, and you have blasphemed the God of heaven. You forgot it. It's written. 
As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And the Bible says, God will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That one thing would be enough to damn you forever. You say, well, I didn't mean anything by it. Friend, that is the sin of it. That you could take the name of Almighty God in an oath and say, oh, I didn't mean anything by it. That means that God means that little to you that you could take his name like that and not mean it. The Bible says every idle word that men speak, sins that have been repressed and well, secrets will be then revealed. Luke 12, verses 2 and 3. For there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closets shall be proclaimed from the housetop. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. One of these days, skeletons will come out of closets. One of these days, God's candid camera will begin to play. One of these days, God's tape recorder will play, and you will be standing there to face the record. Now, let's move on uh, to the final thing. And that is now the sentence determined. The sentence determined. You see, we're talking about a courtroom now. We've given you the setting. We've talked about the summons. We've talked about the secrets that are going to be brought out. Now there's a sentence. The sentence is going to be determined. Notice what he says here. And uh, they were judged every man according to their works, verse 13. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Several things I want to say about this sentence. First of all, I want you to see the sureness of it. They were judged. Uh, you're not going to be able to bribe this judge. No slick lawyer, no shrewd person is going to get you out of it. God swears by himself that you'll be judged. Let me give you one of the most terrifying scriptures in the Bible, Romans 14, verses 11 and 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. God swears by himself that you're going to be judged. But think not only of the sureness of it, but the severity of it. The Bible says they're going to be judged according to their works. Now, you're not saved by works. You're saved by grace, but you're judged by works. You're judged by works. Now, that means there's no mercy. Are you listening? Do not get the wrong idea that when you die, that you will stand before God and throw yourself on the mercy of the court. There will be no mercy. Now, if you want mercy, you may have it. If you want forgiveness, you may have it. If you want grace, it is freely offered to you, but you must have it now in this day and in this age. When you hear the gospel preached and you turn your back on the gospel, do not have the unmitigated gall, the temerity to stand before God at the judgment and say, God, have mercy. May I give you another verse? Hebrews 10, verses 28 through 31. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorer punishment. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, what he's saying is this. If those who despise the Old Testament Mosaic law were judged without mercy, of how much sore punishment, more unmitigated punishment, shall he be thought worthy who's done this? Who has ridiculed Jesus? Who has trampled beneath his feet the precious blood of Jesus Christ who has done despite to the spirit of grace. Are you listening? I am preaching to you Jesus today. 
The Holy Spirit of God is speaking to your heart. And you will walk out of this building this morning either under the blood, having your sins forgiven, or over the blood, trampling the blood of Jesus beneath your feet. Now, when you do that, if you say, I do not want God, I do not want Christ, I do not want to be saved, no to the Holy Spirit. You do despite unto the Spirit of grace. You will not come to the judgment and then plead for mercy. It will do you no good. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. It says nothing of mercy there. You're going to be judged according to your works. Now, in every trial, in every trial, there are three parts. First of all, the evidence is presented. The books are open. What is the evidence? Your deeds. Every lie, every cursing, everything you stole, every gray hair that you gave your mother, every wrinkle that you pinched into your daddy's brow, every infidelity, then your thoughts. God wrote down lust as adultery. God wrote down hatred as murder. And then your influence, not only what you did, but those that you've influenced to do wrong. And then your failure to do good to him that knoweth to do good and to doeth it not to him, it is sin. The great light that you had and you rejected, all of that will be the evidence that is presented against you. One foul, smelly mountain of sin, sins that you've forgotten, sins that are there, the evidence will be presented against you. And then you have a chance to make your defense. Now you think about it. You make your defense. What will your defense be? Right now, suppose the end of time has come and you're there to stand before the Lord. What will your defense be? I mean, there you are before Jesus Christ. You've ignored him, cursed him, walked out on him, turned your back on him. What will you say? Oh, I know what you'll say. No, 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 wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute, Lord. I didn't know what church to join. There were so many churches, Baptist church, Presbyterian church, Church of God, Church of Christ, Episcopalian church, General Assembly, regular Baptist. I didn't know which church to join. He said, I didn't say believe on the church. I said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Yeah, but now wait a minute, Lord. There were some hypocrites in that church, Lord. I know a man in that church who was a hypocrite, Lord. Yes, I did. He'll say, I didn't say believe on the hypocrite. I said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah, but, but Lord, did you know Adrian Rogers? Have you, did you ever hear him preach? Lord, I didn't like him. I came to church on a Sunday morning to be made to feel good and he preached on judgment. I didn't like that. I don't think that's the place to do that. I think people ought to be affirmed when they come to church. I didn't like that preacher. He'll say, I didn't say believe on the preacher. I said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. He'll say, but, uh, but Lord, I wasn't going to go down there and be a hypocrite. Not me. I wasn't going to go until I was sure I could live it. He'll say, I didn't say believe on yourself. I said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But Lord, I didn't have time. When I had that head-on collision, I, I didn't have time. You had time that morning, that Sunday morning, when my servant preached to you and begged you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. I mean, think about what you're going to say. It doesn't even satisfy you. How do you expect it to satisfy a righteous and a holy God? No, the evidence is presented. You make your defense, and then the verdict of the court is handed down. The recording angel is there. He says, Lord Jesus, what shall I write? And a brokenhearted Savior will say, He that denies me before men, the same must I deny before my Father which is in heaven. Write L O S. His name is not in the book of life. How sad, because it could have been. It should have been. But he's not found written in the book of life. And you'll find your soul dropping down into hell. 
not that God desires it. C.S. Lewis said, there are two categories of persons. Those who follow Satan and say to God, not your will, but mine be done. And those who follow Jesus who say, not my will, but thine be done. To the first category, those who say to God like Satan, not your will, but mine be done. When they drop into hell, a broken-hearted God will say, not my will, but thine be done. God, my friend, will give you the dubious privilege of choosing your destiny. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm not going to stand before the great white throne. You want me to tell you why? I've settled out of court. I have settled out of court. I have given my heart to Jesus Christ, and on that cross, Jesus Christ took my sin. He took my judgment. Romans 8, 1 says, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for that. One quick little story, and I'm finished. I've heard it given many ways, but let me give you the essence of it. Some men were out on a prairie. There was tall brown grass. There was a fire. The winds were high and whipping the flames toward them. They knew they could not outrun the flames. They said, we're going to perish in the flames. But a man who knew the ways of the wild said, no, we'll not die. He reached into his pocket, took out a book of matches, and at his feet, he set fire to the grass in front of him. The flames are coming this way, and now the fire is burning that way. One in the group said, you fool. Now we're surrounded by fire. He said, no. He said, wait, I know what I'm doing. He said, wait until this fire burns on and then step over here. Step over here in the burned off place for the fire cannot come where the fire has already been. Friend, are you listening? The fires of God's judgment fell upon Jesus at Calvary and that's where you better stand. That's where you better stand because the fire cannot come where the fire has already been. He died for you. He loves you. He invites you. And I want you to get it settled today. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Remember that the procrastinator is going to be there. The self-righteous person is going to be there. The lost church member is going to be there. How many of you can say with me this morning, Pastor Rogers, I have settled out of court and I know it. I don't just have religion. I have Bible salvation. I am saved by the grace of God. I have a Bible reason and a changed life to back it up. Can you give me that testimony? Just lift your hand up if you can. Thank God for that. Now, if you couldn't lift your hand, I want to help you today to get it settled. You say, Pastor, if a person can know it, I want to know it. All right. I want you to pray like this right now. Dear God, I want to settle out of court. I want to come and stand where the fire has already been. I come to Jesus. I come to the cross. I, I give my heart by faith to Jesus Christ. You've told me, Lord, if I would trust in him, you would save me. Jesus, I do trust you. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you paid for my sin with your blood on the cross. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And right now, by faith, like a child, I receive you. Come into my heart. Pray that, friend. Come into my heart. Forgive my sin. Save me. Save me, Jesus. Did you pray it? Then pray this way. Thank you for doing it. And now, Lord, I will make it public. I will not be ashamed of you because you died for me. Give me the courage to make it public. In your name I pray.